you make a very persuasive case for standardization. Uh, I wonder, does that mean that we could manage with one standard parental nutrition solution for neonates? You would need more than one. I think the uh, the jury is still out as to how many you need. I actually don't think you need very many. And there is a loss of the gain if you have too many. It creates a, a, enough problems in its own right. Going back to the fact that you can alter rates and you can give other supplements. Therefore, just because you've got a bag that hasn't got quite enough sodium in it, a decision has got to be made as to, well, does that mean you need another standard bag with a bit more sodium? Or can you get sodium into a patient outside of that bag? Going back to, I'd rather see bags not manipulated, certainly not at ward level, but ideally not even in a hospital pharmacy but buy a bag that is totally sterilized and put it up without touching it is the ideal. Every time you touch it, problems. A lot of people are on parental nutrition do take something entry. Very few people are on total parental nutrition, which is the, the old name, TPN rather than PN. Therefore, you know, if, it, if it's something like a bit of salt, a bit of potassium, can, can it go entry? Uh, yeah, it's, it's an addition. And, that, and that's absolutely fine. But if it needs to go IV, can you just give it a, a, an additional infusion along with the other drugs or anything else that's going in rather than needing another standard bag? So the, the less standard bags there are, the better. I'm certainly not going to sit here and say we only need one for everybody, um, but I also don't think we need very many. I, I don't think I'm going to sit here and say exactly how many we need. I think I'd have to sit with my colleagues because the, different people have different views on this. Um, but I do believe you can uh, maintain and correctly handle neonates on very few standard bags. Mm, useful points there. Very practical. Could or should pharmacists be prescribing parental nutrition for neonates? I think it's a really good question as to who is best placed to prescribe, probably not just with parental nutrition, but parental nutrition is almost the pinnacle of where pharmacists should be prescribing. It is such a complex pharmaceutics that, which is why I think pharmacy rather than dietitians probably get involved. So it's, you, you could argue parental nutrition, or why, why aren't dietitians doing it now there are dietitians involved and in adults i think dietitians do an awful lot more around parental nutrition in neonates pharmacy probably get involved more than anywhere else because of the complexity of the pharmaceutics behind it and therefore with the way that we have modeled and, and changed as as our as my years have gone on, uh, in terms of our understanding of clinical practice, that combination of clinical practice, the pharmaceutics of the original product, and then the administration knowledge and interactions and things that, that go with, with, with that, is, it's probably the ideal place for pharmacists to be prescribing. It doesn't mean we shouldn't work with a multidisciplinary team. And I think that is absolutely key, probably in parental nutrition more than anywhere. It does need dietetics. It does need doctors. It needs nurses. It needs everybody's input. The person who probably holds the most bits of knowledge um, is and is sort of best placed to have a final say as to how it works, I would say a pharmacist. So, yes, I'm a huge advocate for pharmacists prescribing parental nutrition. I obviously think we should probably be prescribing all sorts of infusions and other things. Um, there's a bit of a train of thought in some ways that uh, should pharmacists pick up almost the more mundane prescribing? I actually think it should be around the other way. It's the complex pharmaceutics that's probably benefit most from, from pharmacists being involved. 
And therefore, I would look at it that way. You know, we don't have to be prescribing everything, um, and there are other people around to do that. But when the pharmaceutics are complex alongside the clinical position, then it's probably best done by those who know about the pharmaceutics, the pharmacists. Mm. Would you like to say a little more about the position of pharmacists as prescribers in the United Kingdom? Pharmacy is in a unique position, I think, in the UK. Um, and not everybody agrees with the way it's gone. But I actually think, bearing in mind what I've just been talking about, that it's really useful to have pharmacists prescribing. We've been able to prescribe now for a good number of years. And I think that's really important. What's changing is in a couple of years' time, every new graduate who comes out of uh, pharmacy schools and universities will be pres prescriber ready. That doesn't mean they're all going to come out and be prescribing everything from day one, but prescriber ready, which means that's a workforce. We are going to have a build up of the number of people who are prescribing. That's exciting from a professional point of view, really, really exciting. I think it helps and ensures the position of pharmacy as a profession as, as, the, as the world goes on. Um, bearing in mind that in the UK, we, we are really working at making the most of pharmacy technicians, making the most of technology, and therefore a lot of things that pharmacists have traditionally done um, will not disappear, but certainly won't be taking up as much of their time. Therefore, being a prescriber is a newer avenue and one that now, with medicines becoming so complex, makes a lot of sense. I think what we've got to do in the UK over the next few years is to really embed where that is best placed, how it all works together as a multidisciplinary team. How do we make the most of everybody's skills? I've mentioned the multidisciplinary team a few times now, and I think more and more medicine, good medicines practice is about the multidisciplinary team, making the most of all the skills, including parents. I'm, I'm going to have to say that as a paediatric pharmacist, we ignore the voice of parents and the child far too often, and yet... They know, <laughs> they know generally that they're at home giving these medicines, that they're experiencing the medicines, um, and yet we ignore their voice far too often. But that multidisciplinary team, totally important, but that understanding of pharmaceutics, those complex pharmaceutics, whether it's gene therapies, parental nutrition, all of this, these sorts of things, um, we should be ensuring that the right people are prescribing the people who understand the product and how it's being used. And that's where we come in.